before we get started, let me introduce the Witch's Cookery. This is Bex. I am so grateful to be collaborating with her on this video today because I've learned so much from her amazing and beautiful videos and I really, really look up to her. On The Witch's Cookery, she talks about pagan traditions, practical magic tips, recipes. She shares her adventures out in nature, foraging plants and food, which I especially appreciate because I aspire to have that kind of lifestyle someday soon. Her videos are so informative, and if you're looking to deepen your witchcraft knowledge or figure out what kind of practice resonates best with you, definitely check out her channel. I will leave the link to her video on thrifting witchcraft supplies in the description below. I hope you enjoy. Admittedly, I do have a little bit of an obsession with small pictures like this kind of thing because you can just find so many really beautiful and unique looking ones. But I will say they do come in handy because you can store oils in them, you can store waters like moon water, storm water, you could put wine in them, I put salt in one of mine to pour salt more easily during rituals or spells. If you do tassiomancy, I know that there are usually some really beautiful china pieces. I have found a really beautiful teapot before and teacups and saucers. I didn't find too many with saucers this time, but thrifting is definitely a process. And if you don't find what you are looking for the first time, if you go maybe a week later, they will have new inventory. Trays like this are not only beautiful, but they are also very useful, especially when it comes to candle magic. You can just place the candles directly on these trays, and then the cleanup of the wax and everything is so much easier. Speaking of candles, I do tend to want to buy as many candlestick holders and candelabras and containers for candles as I find, but I really practiced restraint this time and I only bought a couple. I know a lot of people are pretty hesitant to buy secondhand mirrors, but I just could not say no to this one. And I don't have a problem with buying secondhand mirrors. I will show you how I cleansed it and anointed it a little bit later in this video. If you want to light resin incense or loose incense, but you don't want to use charcoal discs, you can get one of these oil burners and just add a little vegetable oil on the top with your resin and then light a tea light underneath and you're good to go. Storage boxes like this are useful to hold things like incense or oils or even offerings if you don't want to leave them out. If you have, say, an animal or if you just don't want people to be looking at them, these boxes are really great. Here I was getting really excited because I found this jar that matches another jar that I thrifted probably about a year ago and it's the same type, it's just a different color and I just thought that was really cool that you can find matching sets to things if you go thrifting enough because, I mean, duplicates and matches just show up.
majority of my witchcraft supplies are thrifted, like these candlestick holders, this empty wine bottle that I put a candle in, containers that I have for my herbs and spices and things. This beautiful tray was also thrifted. Before putting any of these items to use, I first cleaned them accordingly, and then I cleansed them energetically using incense. Although it's not thrifted, I did want to give a shout out to Connie from SkullsInspired.com for sending this to me because it is so beautiful and ever since I received it in the mail, it has been surrounding my workings and sitting on my altar and it's just amazing. So I'll leave the link to that in the description. When it came to this beautiful mirror, I did take a couple extra steps to cleanse it just because mirrors tend to absorb a lot of energy, especially if they're antique or secondhand. So first I cleaned it and then I sprinkled some cleansing water on it. This could just be blessed water, this could be moon water, whatever it is that you would like to use. Even salt water if it's safe for your item. And then I anointed it with some oil. I drew a protective symbol on the front of it. You could absolutely turn the mirror around and draw a protective symbol on the back of it. I am so happy that I found this tea light holder. It is so beautiful and there's just something about it that really resonates with me. It makes the tea lights just feel extra special and I had that one lit for a couple of hours the other day and it was just immaculate. I loved it so much. I know that the idea of having a fully stocked and organized apothecary is very appealing, but I found that gathering these little jars slowly over time and filling them with ingredients that I use is much more practical instead of just getting a lot of jars all at once and filling them up with every single ingredient that I could possibly think of. There's something really intriguing about this box to me because it is a heart, but when I first saw it, I thought that it was a planchette, and if you turn it upside down, it really does look like one. I decided to store ribbons and strings that I save from gifts or products, whatever it is, I save those to use in my craft, and I needed somewhere practical to store them because they were just kind of lying around in random places and I wanted to keep them all concise. This tiny little glass candelabra is one of my favorite things that I found and it fits chime candles, like spell candles, perfectly and 